Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we have a little bit of a sub segment for you guys uh, called Wrist Watch Rambles and Rants, brought to you by channel sponsor Wrist Candy Watch Club. So I try to be as transparent as I can when it comes to anything that is going to be sponsored. I do not do paid reviews, but I'll do paid segments. So, um, you know, while I'm not always uh, doing specific watch reviews, sometimes I like to chat with you guys about other subjects, um, sometimes comparisons, and this is a good comparison, I think. Uh, one, it's Seiko versus Citizen. Two, it's, you know, Promaster Land versus uh, Alpinist. And if I wanted to bring in something a little bit more current, I probably should have grabbed one of my Prospects Alpinist watches. I chose my blue Alpinist because it is blue <laughs> with red accents, and this Citizen is blue with red accents as well. Um, also, uh, the uh, Citizen is a JDM uh, model, so it is not released internationally. This is for the Japanese domestic market. Um, it might be available in other markets in Asia as well, but it is not available um, in the US. And then on the other side, I guess to contrast, we do have an Alpinist uh, that was available only in the US, uh, US market, uh, but limited um, and has since sold out and have retained their values pretty well. Um, but I think that they're two good examples regardless, um, just because there's other variations of both the Citizen and the Seiko. Uh, of course, right now, the Seiko <laughs> is really uh, striking while the iron is hot in terms of their brand uh, really reviving the Alpinist line and expanding it and, and really um, just kind of fleshing it out more and more because it is quite popular. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that I have these watches on a little pad. One of those reasons is because uh, one of the first differences is that the um, the bracelet on this Citizen uh, Pro Master Land actually isn't very articulated. Um, it stands up and it has quite a bit of body, which I'll show you guys right now uh, by zooming out the camera, getting these pieces in hand, and taking a closer look. All right, guys. So what I mean by it can't sit flat because it has a bit of body to it and is less articulated. That is how flat that that goes versus the Alpinist, which will lay totally flat. Um, no, this isn't um, the Alpinist bracelet, but it is a Seiko bracelet. If you watch my channel, you'll have seen the video. It's one of those uh, secret um, OEM Seiko options that just work really, really well and fit perfectly and I think looks great. And it also really accentuates the more kind of versatile dressy side of the Alpinist, um, at least within this iteration of the, you know, more popular style uh, with the internal rotating bezel compass. Uh, that hasn't always been the case. There have been other Alpinists uh, well before this style. Uh, they just maybe weren't as popularized, uh, but this is what most people think of. They think of the cathedral hands, they think of that internal rotating bezel, and they think of this general um, silhouette. Now, Citizen came out with this model a couple years ago and now have just finally released this great blue combination, blue dial um, and with that nice red accent there. I've reviewed this model on the channel, so if you want to get full details on that, uh, feel free. Actually, you know what? While I'm here, why don't I just... Uh, pop these guys out again real quick and show you guys who Wrist, Wrist Candy Watch Club is. So who are these mysterious channel sponsors? Well, if you watch YouTube, you've probably seen these straps before. Uh, I reviewed them very early within my channel days and since then, as I've grown my channel, Wrist Candy Watch Club was kind enough to reach out um, and work out a way to kind of help me grow the channel by sponsoring uh, additional content. Uh, and these are how they've kind of grown out and expanded their line into, you know, some actually really nice uh, higher end seatbelt 
seat belt style NATOs with improved hardware, as you can see there, everything milled out. Um, and then these nice kind of uh, almost engraved, uh, is the best way to kind of put it, uh, lines in here. So it adds a little bit of texture, a little bit of visual interest extra. So wrist candy watch club, check them out. You support the channel, they support the channel. So why not connect? But back to the segment here. Seiko versus Citizen. Um, yeah, I mean, when I first saw this Citizen, my first thought was, wow, that's kind of, are they taking shots at the Alpinist? And, um, you know, I think it's it's very apparent that they absolutely are looking to get within that market and catch that eye. Um, there are some differences, uh, one of the main ones being the movement type. So the movement in here is going to be a radio controlled eco drive. So it's a solar quartz versus a mechanical movement here. And of course, this is the newest, um, you know, Seiko Alpinist, but it's the bluest, darn it. So it, it, uh, it was chosen. So complain down in the comments below um, and suggest which one of my Alpinists in my collection I actually should have compared it to. Um, also, we're getting steel versus um, titanium. You're getting a hard coat on this titanium though, which is very nice, not getting a hard coat on this steel. Um, although Seiko does do their Dia Shield coating on some watches within the Prospex line, most of the time they're gonna be using it within their Presage line. So unfortunately, not gonna be able to get that here, but um, you know, it's, that's a preference thing, right? Is some people like titanium, some people like steel. I myself have really traditionally been a big fan of stainless steel, but I found watches like this Citizen as well as my titanium G-Shock kind of changing my mind um, on how I feel about titanium just because they're so uh, well done. So you can see here, really well executed. Now, if you were expecting some type of versus death match where I write down the scores, uh, I'm just, I'm not going to do that. I honestly like both of these watches and I'll just share with you, you know, some of my general thoughts. I couldn't pick a winner. That's why I have so many watches. Um, so I'm not really that guy. Maybe check out the channels where they, you know, hype up a watch um, in an episode and then immediately flip it a couple of days or weeks later now that the value of those watches have inflated from a, a hyped up review. Um, I, I really get nothing uh, but enjoyment from sharing my thoughts with you guys. Um, I don't get you know, I mean, you saw that, hey, uh, I get a strap sponsor um, and uh, that's about it. And uh, so here are my thoughts, guys. When it comes to the uh, the bracelets, I think the Citizen, uh, although this is a nicer bracelet uh, compared to your typical Alpinist bracelet, I think the Citizen is executed better. Um, you can see just the sharpness there and the, the fit and fit. Uh, finish is just really beautiful. I will say where they are lacking is going to be uh, they show a little weakness there in the Look at that movement uh, within the end link Versus here. I mean this isn't even the strap that's supposed to fit and it fits tighter, right? So um, You know from a finish standpoint very close, but I think fit and finish together uh citizen wins it out although the end link i'll give to seiko in terms uh they ha they both do also have sapphire crystals so you know very equally matched there uh the newer uh alpinists do have a, an extended power reserve and uh, anti-reflective coating on their sapphire versus this citizen um actually has anti-reflective coating um, out of the box here, uh, which is great um, versus this one. So you're probably in terms of looking at the dial, uh, you might get some different reads, but you are going to get a flat sapphire versus this one has a slight dome. So you can see at a harsh angle, 
it, you're going to be able to read the Seiko dial a little bit more um, because there's really no distortion. I mean, it's a busier dial in general. So functionally, you know, uh, if at a glance, if you're going to be at the perfect viewing angle, you would be good to go um, with either. But uh, the quickest readable uh, one is definitely going to be the Citizen there. Where they really depart from each other, although they have a very similar size and shape, um, being in that 39 uh, millimeter and slightly and some change uh, space um, is that the Seiko Alpinus has really been really well known for a go anywhere, do anything piece uh, because it dresses up, it dresses down, it's gorgeous, it's nostalgic um, while still you know having a little bit of a modern flair. Here, uh, there's nothing uh, you know very versatile about this piece this is straight up an adventure watch it is that's ex it's its purpose um it's tough uh it shouts it out at your face it's not trying to get any ornate details it's not trying to impress you it's not trying to impress any onlookers that see it on your wrist it's just here to do its job and do it really really well so a more focused package i think with the citizen uh versus a more versatile package with the seiko i'd say that's probably where um they're going to differ the most but let's get them on wrist and uh just see how they wear and uh discuss some wear impressions all right guys so let's do it as you can see on the wrist they at a glance they look very similar uh the dark blue the uh, general kind of shape with the asymmetrical side there where you're going to get a push button on one and an extra crown on the other you can see here lays nicely on the wrist hugs it uh, nice round kind of shapes there really beautiful even up close uh, with some lens distortion where it's going to make the watch appear bigger doesn't appear oversized and when you get it down here you just see uh you know quite uh it, it's it's a very versatile look it doesn't shout at you you know big adventure watch it definitely uh, reads as a sports watch um but i will say some of those ornate details do just add that kind of more formal flair, especially when you compare uh, with this particular colorway, those cathedral hands, you know, the uh, the indices there being high polished versus here, you're gonna get everything printed out, ultimately legible. Uh, everything is very flat in appearance, very matte. Um, the finish is beautiful though, look at that titanium the brushing my goodness uh really great one thing i will say here on the seiko you're going to have just a standard push button clasp and two micro adjust holes that's going to be something um even on the standard alpinist bracelet here though on the citizen one of the nice things you're going to get is these push button triggers which actually enable you to do this check this out Yes, a watch, you get two clicks of micro adjust there. So basically a half link to play with. Um, and I think that's amazing, especially for the price, around 500 bucks. Actually, you can get this from Sakura Watches um, for 432 the last time I checked. I'll leave a link in the description because this is kind of a harder watch to find. Um, but yeah, this thing is sweet, guys. It, I, I, that clasp is great. It feels great on the skin, hypoallergenic, right? So it's eh, there's something about it that helps it disappear. Also, you know, with the lack of a metal movement in there, mechanical movement, it makes the it lighter, and it's in a lighter case, so it has even more of a balance, especially when you have kind of a more complex uh, clasp here balanced out it just there's something that's very well balanced about it versus here um, you know it's gonna feel like a mechanical watch like you, you know the weight is here and not here even though this is a little bit of a nicer bracelet uh, you can see it's still relatively thin it's not super chunky 
or anything like that from that perspective. So with that said, guys, let's actually get these pieces um, off. We'll lay them out. We'll do some low light transition and loom shots and move into some closing thoughts. Okay, we did bring the pad back out because of the way that these lay. I did want to keep them both, um, you know, and then within the same focal point. Also, um, I did zoom it out a little bit so you could still see the bracelet so we can see the way that the light glides over the finishing, etc. So let's go ahead and hit the lights here. All right, as you can see from a pure loom perspective, definitely very comparable, guys, um, is you're just going to see more surface area, of course, applied um, when it comes to the Citizen. Um, on the Seiko side, uh, very strong loom, considering the fact that there's so little of it that's there. Um, so, of, of course, you know, I'd say they're pretty closely matched there, but I'd give the edge to the Citizen, at least um, right now. We'll see how that lasts in terms of what fades over time um, as we kind of get into this segment a little bit deeper. But one thing I like to do is work in some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be, you know, coming in and out of an office building, maybe walking underneath an overhang. Um, could be just walking underneath the shade of a tree, spending time in your favorite automobile. So you're not always going to see what this thing looks like in optimal lighting. So I really like to work in some less than optimal lighting to even include some harsh lighting as you guys are gonna see here now because uh, it's gonna get to some high contrast. And this is kind of uh, typically will expose any type of, you know, imperfections within the finish and you can see that the light is still quite uniform as it glides over these cases and bracelets the only thing it's really exposing is pretty much internal i should say not internal but external wear um, just from me wearing the timepieces and one of them is at a huge disadvantage being just steel with no coating while the other um, and being much older and me having had it for years versus months or weeks um, so you'll you're gonna see you know more signs of wear of course but you can see the way the light plays off of these dials definitely in very different ways on the Seiko, you do have, a, I mean, even though they're both matte and finish, the Seiko does have a nice sunray pattern versus the more standard matte pattern on the Citizen. And they both grab the light in different ways. Check that out. That matte finish can really grab the light and just spread it and distribute it very evenly, which is really, really quite cool. So you're gonna go from like a very dark, to almost a you know kind of a faded blue there which is great whereas on the Seiko you're just going to get that vibrant stripe there so you're going to get that contrast it's going to be very bright and it's going to have the lows and the highs working together etc so very very cool great looking watches i think in mixed lighting conditions as well as standard lighting conditions um but I'm a big fan of both. But when it comes to my closing thoughts here, guys, um, I think these are both winners. Um, <clears throat> I think if you really want to kind of go all out and if you're just like, hey, I'm already living kind of an adventurous life. I like to climb. I'm out in the wild. I'm doing all these things. Then I would say the Citizen is probably the watch for you. Um, if... On the other hand, you're like, hey, I want to start getting out more and doing some more of these things. And maybe I want a, a timepiece that will inspire me to, you know, maybe push my adventurous uh, boundaries a little bit further. I'd say maybe the Alpinus is more uh, because there's just more lore there. There's more of a fan base. Um, there's just... I, I, yeah, I guess lore, yeah. There's just more to that story, to the history around the Seiko Alpinist and just around Seiko and adventures and adventure watches and kind of all of that. I mean, they're both 
very capable, you know, 200 meters of water resistance. Um, essentially watches that you really won't need to do anything to. Um, one is an automatic, so you'll be not replacing a battery. The other is solar powered, so you won't be replacing a battery. Uh, I will say, uh, for those of you that didn't watch the full review, uh, this Citizen, although it does run a lot more accurate, um, then an automatic movement is going to be like plus or minus 15 seconds a month uh, versus 15 seconds maybe a day. I'll say that this 6R15 that's in here actually runs pretty well. Um, it's probably, you know, maybe plus two or three on a bad day. Um, but uh, with that being said, I still have to keep setting it because it it only has a 50 hour power reserve um, versus let's say the newer one that has 70 hours that's still very good here with the citizen um <laughs> i mean that thing is just going to be on for a lot more i mean you have basically a 12 month power reserve um with the power save uh features being activated and being used so like if you were to get this fully charged and throw it in a drawer technically you could leave it there you know for almost a year if not a year and it would still be fine keeping time only getting off just by a few seconds and that's only if it's not receiving that radio transmission but because I'm here in the US and I bought this watch and it's a JDM model. Um, I did have to get an emulator for the JJY signal. So on my phone, essentially, I was able to set this via uh, the signal. It takes anywhere between five to 10 minutes. Um, luckily, I'm a little older and I was in the Marine Corps for a while. So there's high pitched sounds. I didn't even hear that my family was getting a little bit uh, drove crazy by when I was setting this watch. But it didn't affect me at all. Um, it did take time though, which was kind of annoying. Uh, and honestly, that crown, it doesn't work like a traditional crown. You unscrew it and you try to set and it's honestly more of an electronic, I guess if you think of drive-by wire, right, where your accelerator pedal isn't necessarily pulling the throttle cable, uh, it's very much like that. Um, when it comes to how that crown actuation works, definitely look it up on um, on YouTube. You'll find tons more videos on it. Um, it's tough honestly, and it's very, very tedious to get this thing set. Um, it's just it, not intuitive for a watch owner, a watch lover, somebody who sets a mechanical watch every morning, right? Um, which is what I do <laughs> because I have so many watches in the rotation. So um, definitely a little bit of a different situation for me personally, um, but I will say as somebody with a collection, there's room for both. Um, and that this citizen honestly has captured a bit of my imagination and my attention. Um, why, you know, and you guys know I love the Alpinist. I mean, gosh, I don't even know how many I've reviewed on this channel. And I mean, I, I have a couple of, of them, <laughs> like five, uh, some, somewhere more than five, maybe six, um, in the collection right now that I've reviewed. Um, and honestly, there's other ones that I still want. So uh, there's, I would have to even recount each one that I have. I probably have more than that. Um, but I do have quite a few. I, I only have one of this, but I will say um, for the ProMaster that I only have one of, um, I did buy quite a few Citizens this year. So, and this was one of them. Uh, and this is the one non-mechanical one uh, that really caught my eye enough for me to go out of my way, go through the YouTube videos, um, look up that JJY signal emulator for my phone so that I could set it and use it. And that's because I love that aesthetic that much. I, I love the dial, I love the kanji uh, day wheel, although you can set it to English. It's just, it's such, such a cool collecting thing. Like I like it from, it's, it's, Funny because uh, it's the fact that I am such a watch fan and collector that kind of pushed me to like this watch even more. Um, but I think it is actually quite desirable for a non-watch person um, just because of its, you know, it's you tell somebody, oh, sapphire, titanium, hard coating, uh, set it and forget it, solar, you know, all that, very accurate, can take a radio update. like. 
that those are things that appeal to people that aren't even really into watches, especially if you just want premium goods. Um, so those are things that of value that people value and honestly the price point doesn't mark up that much so you're getting a lot you're getting that cool clasp you're getting tight you're just getting a lot of good stuff and people who want good stuff will like that um now on the other side for a mechanical watch there's a lot of things that kind of you know in-house well say it goes in-house yes but a lot of people oh it's overpriced they've lost their way you know you just hear these these things right uh as somebody who's in manufacturing, prices have gone up on things, <laughs> uh, whether they contain precious metals or not. Um, raw materials have gone up in scarcity. And if you want to produce things and you do that many things in-house, you have to buy more raw materials for you to be able to actually deliver. And Seiko has been delivering a lot of new releases. So they're making a ton of watches still, if not even more right now than they have um, in the past, and I mean, they've made tons, because you can still buy n new old stock of watches that have been discontinued for years. Um, so, you know, it just goes to show, yes, um, there are gonna be some things as a fan that are gonna help get you over the hump in terms of committing to the price point or the chase when it comes to one of these watches, but uh, I think just, you know, for your average everyday watch fan, you would really, these are both great options. I, I love the Alpinist, the Prospects Alpinist, the newer releases. I have a couple of those. Um, and for me, this Citizen Pro Master Land, it makes me want to try other Citizen Pro Master Lands. And I would, God, I would love it if they would just do a mechanical version. Um, but in this case, uh, you know, it makes it actually a little bit different from the Alpinist, so it makes me feel like why not have both with that said let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do it like and if you haven't already please do subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys